Welcome everyone. I'm happy that you're here to, uh, for, uh, for my talk. So, uh, Agile sucks, or does it? And uh, so, yeah, so let's start with the first part of the title Agile sucks. Um, I suggest we have a look at uh, Twitter. You know, it's uh, the place where uh, all ragers uh, meet. <laughs> and what kind of things we can find there? Well, for instance, we have this Friday morning scrum meetings. Well, in my experience, it's not like that, but well, uh, okay. And let's have a look at the, at the comments below. Let's look at the one in the middle from Zamomin. What's the point in micromanaging fully educated software engineers anyway? Hashtag no scrum, hashtag agile sucks. Okay, that's not my view of agile, but fine. And the final one uh, from Rageblog. You're right, no other engineering discipline is forced to use agile methods. Agile only benefits management consultants. Hashtag agile, hashtag agile sucks. Well, maybe it's me, management consultant. I don't know. And uh, okay, so we see this hashtag. hashtag we, can, we can browse in, uh, in Twitter. There is, there is a, a lot of things, not to mention all the cases where people just don't use the hashtag. We have, for instance, this one too from Ray in RK. About two years in Scrum teams. Agile equals work at a conveyor belt. Yeah, so it's, uh, it makes people being uh, code monkeys. Yeah, it's uh, dumb work and nothing interesting. And the final one from Dragon Sphinx, cheap, fast, good, pick two. This one is really clever. You see, it's a, it's a common saying, you can't have all three. For instance, you want something quickly and nice, yeah, then uh, it won't come cheaply. It will cost you a lot of money. And then, which two does Agile pick? I haven't heard anyone claiming it's expensive or slow. Again, it's very clever. Indeed, when, when Agile is promoted, when Agile is sold, we are not said it's expensive or slow. We are said that uh, it will cost you less or you will make more money, not it will cost you money. And again, we, we will say it will go quicker or we'll have a better time to market. And so, yeah, it's kind of to argue it's uh, really clever. And we can have a look at the comment from Terry Kloss. He, he goes, he, he answers to the question, cheap and fast, and he brings some personal experience. It replaces some QA with being able to respond quickly to customer complaints. Ouch. Yes, that's something which happens indeed sometimes. No, uh, we are so used to deliver quickly that we don't really care if that's of good quality or not what we do. And yeah, from an engineer perspective, uh, that hurts, you know, they bring something which is not from high quality level. So now for the other part of the title, how does it? Uh, let's start just, I want to, to present myself. It's more about just saying what is my legitimacy to answer to this question. So very, very quickly, uh, I'm Jean-Pierre Lambert. I have, I have a few hats in my, in my life. I'm an IJ coach, Scrum Master, test facilitator, which kind of a weird term to say like technical coach about testing, quality, test automation, things like that. And I'm sole consultant. And my legitimacy comes from my blog and from uh, YouTube channel Scrum Live. That's actually how I'm presented here at DevBreak. So there is a new video and new post uh, every week. And well, let's say that people say that I say clever things, so I guess uh, it's not completely bullshit. Yeah, so that's where my legitimacy comes from. And yeah, so what is my answer? Yeah, I, c I find it kind of weird to thinking that a J sucks. And as you can guess, I'm, I'm convinced it's not the case. And because in my mind, no, no, it's, it's the opposite. It's actually awesome. So yeah, so I will try to convince you that maybe the situation actually sucks. Yeah, what we saw in the tweets, yeah, it sucks. It's true. That is not a judge problem. So let's start with this. What does the industry think a judge is? And I think we'll find some answers there. So let's take a very, very basic view. It boils down to this. If you're doing some daily meetings and you're using post-its, then yeah, you're agile. Definitely you're agile. That's what is seen in quite a lot of companies. 
And let's dig a little further. So yeah, well, actually, if the delimiting is stand up, and you got, obviously you got some bonus points, uh, management is welcome. If it's a status meeting, that's totally fine. And uh, well, it's a daily meeting, but if it's only just every few days, that's okay too. And about the post-its, well, what matters is to have some post-its displayed, not really to use them, you know, it's just that uh, we're agile, you know, it's use them, it doesn't, not really important. And a thing I have seen is that people use them only for the retrospective event and not the rest of the time, and more specifically during the retrospective, they use it only to gather data on writing what went well, what went wrong. And that's all, which is, in my mind, a big problem because Post-it is a really powerful tool. You can move them around, you can group them, you can draw some diagram around it, and now we're just writing things, putting them, and just uh, then forgetting them. And let's, let's go a little further. If that just to write something back on a piece of paper, then don't use post-its. Actually, they don't, co they don't come cheap. Actually, post-its are quite pricey. So it just should do it. I mean, yeah, so. But we can do better than that. There is better than this. It's, it's using Jira, of course. Yeah, you're using Jira. Yeah, you're, you're, you're king of the hill. And what does that mean? That means that sometimes people just, teams cannot change their workflow. Sometimes for seemingly good reasons, because you have many teams and you want teams to have the same workflow. So people, obviously not the teams themselves, just decide on the workflow and force it down the throat to all teams. Other times it's just that they can't change their workflow themselves. So they have to ask the Jira expert in the company or ask some support team. At best, they do it, but it takes quite a lot of time. So the team ends up not really experimenting that much with their workflow because, uh, you know, it's processes just to try a new thing, so don't try too, too much things. And sometimes the support team just says plainly that they won't do it, so no, it doesn't happen. Other things that happen is that you're not forced to use Jira to track hours. Actually, you can do great things with Jira, but you can also do bad things. The problem is not tools, it's about what, how people use tools. So it's a wonderful tool to track hours, to track what people are doing up to the last minute. And in my opinion, that's a problem. And that's not the problem of the tool against what people do with the tool. And finally, people need to talk to each other. And when you have a tool, but well, sometimes people just talk, but only through the tool. Sometimes it's important, there is new information, you need to log it somewhere. Other times you just need to talk to each other and you are the just it's a desk near to you, but you don't talk to each other, you talk through the tools. That's kind of problem, or sad at least. So let's ask some uh, software engineer what, what, what he has to say about it. Let's ask him, yeah, so what is Agile? We guess he will talk about Agile sex, but more precisely, what is his view? And he probably he could say something like, well, you know, Agile is the same old stuff, we asked new terms, things like that, but, well, no, not really. Actually, it's worse. At least before, we had specifications. And I kind of agree with him. Let's, let's tell you a story, my story, actually. So if you are French, you probably know this, this uh, set-top box from, uh, from CanalSat. Uh, at some point in my life, I worked on the software running this. So maybe you've used some of my work. And uh, yeah, it was kind of an old fashioned project. And yeah, we had some big specifications. And what happened with these specifications? Well, we read them before implementing, we reviewed them, we challenged them, we iterated on the specification with the customer. And so now today, we stopped doing big specification, and in, in my opinion, it's for the best, but we still need to read the specification before we implement them, we still need to review them, we still need to challenge them, we still need to iterate on them with the customer. And in my opinion, that's the missing part. So, yeah, now we are doing user stories. With user stories, is a really simple tool, but it's pretty common to 
twist it around in a very... Well, that's a problem. Let, let's have a few examples. So from the upper left, as a product owner, I want a button so that there is more clicks. Yeah, how come the product owner is a user of the system? Maybe there could be some more details that just having more clicks, something useful to the business, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this tool is, is, is not a good use. Upper, on the upper right, we have, as a user, I can fill in a form when I unsubscribe so that I, I explain why I, I unsubscribe. Uh, yeah, so now it must be I want if you do proper user stories. And it definitely, the user doesn't want to fill in a form when he unsubscribes. It's, it's the marketing team, it's you, it's the people behind the product who want this information. It's really important, but it's not the user who wants it. So again, it's not proper user stories. On the lower left, we have, uh, as a user, I want to watch ads. And we just did not bother to write the so that, because if we did, we would have realized that no, the user doesn't want to view ads. We definitely want him to view ads, but it's not him who wants it. Uh, and finally, we have maybe the best user stories of the four. As a company, I want to be GDPR compliant so that I, I am not fined up to 4% of annual global turnover. Yeah, maybe we just could go away without using user stories, something like GDPR, damn it. It's, uh, okay, so the point here is just that people have to think about how they work. They just can't say, there is a process, we do user stories, and we work whatever way. No, we have to think why we do it, how we use it. And uh, if they don't, we, f we, we end up with something which is called garbage in, garbage in, garbage out. If you just put it the bad thing in the system, it ends up, well, bad thing in the end. And this is uh, rather my view of Agile, my de one of my definition, it's showing an extreme level of rigor. If you're not extremely rigorous, uh, well, it's quite hard to have only a few processes because indeed Agile is about reducing the level of processes, but yeah, it means that people show a strong level of discipline and of rigorous, of rigorness. If you don't, then yeah, you are to add some processes. Uh, it's about autonomy. It's quite hard to give autonomy to people if they are not rigorous, and then only the people, each other in the same team. If your teammate is not rigorous, how do you find a way to work with him? It's not that, that easy. Uh, it's about delivering very high level of quality. Agile is about quality. And finally, it's also about always focusing on value. It's also rigorous at the train of thought level. The way we, we think is to be really rigorous. So. Yeah, we always question the way we work, why we do it, and so on. And so, yeah, maybe we could conclude with, uh, if we compare this, uh, we what has been called for agile, uh, th that's the kind of, uh, of agile that sucks, versus what maybe you could call uh, agile at heart, which is kind of true agile, or actually, I should have changed the slide. It's more like having a proper work environment, actually, agile or not. What we have is that on the left side, it's, a lo it's, lo it's mostly about uh, following dumb rules. Like, okay, uh, I just want to think, actually. Let's do this and that's all. I know on what we should be doing is constantly stepping back, thinking about how we work, why we work this way, and so on. Another item, it would be, yes, sometimes it's about exploiting people. Yeah, Scrum has been used so many times as a way to squeeze juices, more, more juices out of developers. And that's not how it means it's meant to be. It's not how the creators of Scrum think it should be. And that's definitely a problem. No, it should more be about empowering people th so they can create a better product and so on. And yeah, on the left, we are mostly about tracking people. When we track hours, actually, we track people. We want to know what people are working on. And remember the tweet at the beginning? Yeah, we are micromanaging. When you, you ask hours, you are micromanaging highly qualified software engineers. That's a problem. 
And no, the idea would be that we would focus on value. We don't care if people just have fun at work, just don't work, just if we have value in the end. That's not the point. We want to focus on value. And yeah, the consequences of all this is often a lot of politics on the left side, uh, because uh, yeah, we, are, we want the status quo, we want to protect uh, how, how things are going. Uh, yeah, we don't focus on the, truly on the business. Uh, well, on Agile, it should much be uh, about Condor, like we truly say things like they are, we are focused all together on the same goal, on bringing value and so on. And, well, yeah, this is awesome. And this happens in companies, not all. But you, sh well, I mean, uh, if you're a developer and s what you leave is what is on the left, just look someplace else, honestly. Just leave. There is some awesome place to work. And uh, yeah, maybe the day where they won't find any software engineer to work for them, maybe they'll change their ways or just die and the world will be better. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, for me, Agile is awesome. And I hope that I, that I have uh, convinced you. And so uh, thank you. And if you have any question, I will be uh, glad to answer.